Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank the organizers, Alfredo, Marcos, uh, Marcel, and Tino. It's very nice to be in a conference where, uh, I mean, most of people are known, because sometimes you go to a conference and then you don't know anyone, so to have dinner with strangers is not so good. So thank you for this opportunity. Um, okay, I, I have not been working on semi-classicals or even anything that's related to age by tend tending to zero, but then the, the idea of coming to Natal, to this place, so uh, make me feel like, let me see what I can find that's really at least have a wave, some waves. It's not about quantum waves or complex waves, but, but you'll be classical waves, in fact, linear uh, optics, optical waves or light. So this is a work done with people in Porto Alegre. Four of them are, oh, sorry. Can I just? Oh, no. Can you help me? Okay, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, sorry. Okay, um, three of them are experimentalists. So, um, to just to give you an, an overview, I'll talk about rogue or flick waves, uh, super extreme waves, optical rogue waves. We our experiment part of our work is experimental, and our results and some conclusions. So this is a very famous picture. This is called New Year, New Year Wave. It was recorded in 95. And then what is special about this wave is that you see that the crest high is about 18.5 meters and exceeds the significant wave height of 11.8 meters by a factor of 1.5. And then this is significant wave uh, height is, is a way to classify when you have a rogue wave or not. And then when the significant wave height is four times the standard deviation of the surface elevation, then you have a rogue wave. So they, they have, the, the in, I mean, the main characteristics is that they ha are high amplitude waves that appear more often than predicted by the Gaussian statistics. The early account of this phenomenon is in ocean waves, 64, 71, 74. Uh, I think Mallory provided the first discussion, discussion of di giant waves in the ag Agulhas current. They have usually steep, solitary, and tight group profiles. I mean, they look like solitons. Also, uh, solitons are solitary waves that propagate without spreading water because of a balance between dispersion and nonlinearity. Okay, I try to use <laughs> what I have read about ocean rogue waves because, I mean, I'm not from the optics group. I just interact with these people, and uh, it's easier to read papers written by people with that deal with ocean waves than with people them from optics in general they are experimental and lots of details in papers so that's the to give you an idea about what is what I'll talk about I use something about ocean waves and then I'll go to optical waves so um, first approach to be like random linear superposition of many plane waves with different directions and wavelength and then this offers a, statis a statistical explanation for the occurrence of freak waves. By the central limit theorem, the sea surface, height h, must be a Gaussian random variable with some standard deviation sigma. And in the limit of a, na a narrow frequency spectrum, the crest high then follows a Rayleigh distribution that you see that uh, the probability that you have this uh, high crest wave is the case exponentially with eight by squared, eight being the crest high. So uh, uh, the likelihood of observing even a freak wave is hundred of years. In hundred of years, it should be essentially non-existent. But then, this, I mean, this must be like thirty years or twenty something. You see, twenty-two 
accident with supercarriers that they think that's related to rogue waves in the ocean. Um, so uh, in the literature, you see that the main, uh, two main generation mechanisms for rogue waves. Linear theory, that's simple linear superposition of sinusoidal waves, and linear focusing due to the presence of currents in the ocean or change in the fluid depth. Okay, the linear theory seems that uh, it seems not to be so good to predict uh, many events. So you go to nonlinear corrections, and then you have like nonlinear effects on crossing seas, one dimension modulation stability, this known as Benjamin Fell index, modulation stability by varying currents, and modulation stability by wind blowing. blowing. It, it means that uh, with nonlinear corrections, you get a uh, you can predict higher events. So uh, one dimension, uh, nonlinear effect on crossing C could be like you have uh, two wave fields propagating different in different uh, directions relative to each other, and then you use non, uh, generalized nonlinear shaded equation to um, uh, study the, the crossing waves and then the nonlinear interactions. For modulation stability, uh, that's something that's really people in optics like a lot. Is uh, like here is one uh, D dimension, one uh, D wave, but you have a carrier that is modulated. Um, I mean, I don't. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Oh yes, uh, you have a carrier that is modulated, and then uh, you have uh, under the assumption of um, narrow band. Uh, frequency of the carrier. Instability in this modulation may grow in time and space. And then here again, people use a nonlinear uh, Schrodinger equation to model, for example, uh, waves or in the ocean, because then with this nonlinear Schrodinger equation, have two parameters, could be the um, water depth and also, um, or the frequency of the career, and then you can change these parameters and you can see, for example, you can destroy this profile and see that uh, suddenly you see some very uh, uh, intense wave. Uh, I mean, a wave with a very high amplitude. So um, there are lots of um, things that you can find in the, li the literature. I just, I thought that hell it would be here, <laughs> but um, um, for example, Heller from Heller, uh, more than, I, I think I have here two papers, but they, he has lots of papers on this subject. Like, but a refraction of a Gaussian seaway, you can see freak waves in linear regime in a microwave stud. You can see uh, granularity are the joint generator of optical rogue waves. Uh, I will tell you in a minute what optical rogue waves are. Uh, statistics of extreme waves in random media, in triggering stream events, and non scaling photonic seas, and then Kauskas and rogue waves in an optical sea. So, but all these, uh, or in this paper, the, the main thing is uh, linear mechanisms to, uh, to explain how they appear or to give some predictions. But I, I really don't, uh, I mean, uh, our point is not rogue waves, but super extreme waves. The super extreme waves uh, is a new class of waves that exhibits uh, an enhanced wave amplification. And then it has been shown experimentally and theoretically in a water uh, wave tank. Um, so when I say super rogue waves, it means that uh, that criteria of four times the significant wave height or four times the standard deviation can be like, for example, in papers held six times the standard deviation, but you can find waves that are even with high amplitude. Uh, they correspond to high order solutions of the focus, focus in nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And in optics, super extreme light pulses exceeding by far usual rogue waves. Criteria has been recently predicted to occur in CO2 laser and the harmonic modulation. So these people. Um, from my uh, department. So there is, uh, uh, I mean, we have a group in optics. The laboratory was like inactive for 10 years, and now they we are trying to work again and 
that the, their interest is in this kind of uh, thing I'll show you in a minute. So, what is an optical rogue wave? Uh, optical rogue wave is, what is a term coined by Soli in 2007. Is, uh, this is an experiment uh, that, um, I mean, he coined this, this term because, uh, okay, from this experiment they could have some data that's really very similar to what happens in ocean uh, rogue waves. It's very, very similar. The idea is, I, I mean, this is an experimental thing, so it's a miracle. I don't know how the, it's a miracle in a very good sense, but you have like a seed, I will tell you just what I can seed pulses that uh, go through a nonlinear nonlinear fiber. For me, it's here is important. You always need some nonlinear mechanism to generate these rogue waves or super extreme uh, or optical rogue waves. And uh, then it's filtered, but the point is with this experiment, they could get like many thousand events that could be captured with high resolution in a single shot measurement. So uh, you have here, this is in the horizontal axis is time, is three different set of data for different power, and you see that uh, uh, lots of, I mean, high stream events, and then here is the number of events as a function of, uh, sorry, is thing, <laughs> intensity, intensity beams. So, but the, the, the thing is that you have here, for example, with lower probability events, I mean, that have very, have very high amplitude, and then in for the, from the results, the number of events increase with the power. But uh, this is an inspiration from people in optical, um, that they do optical, work with optics, because, uh, after his work, uh, it seems that modulation stability is really, really an important ingredient to get, to, to have, to get some stream events in optics. So, the, um, about the, his paper, the nonlinear process responsible for, for the supercontinuous generation amplified the noise, presented the initial laser, laser pulse. So, he has noise, and then when he sent to this nonlinear fiber, it really amplifies. The, the effect. For long pulses and continuous wave input radiation, mo modulation stability uh, broadens the spectrum from seed noise in the initial stage of propagation so that the output spectrum is highly sensitive to initial conditions. Condi conditions. And uh, he again used the nonlinear equation to modulate or to, or to study the, or to compare the numerical results with the experimental data. And then it seems that this uh, nonlinear equation was really good to, to, to reproduce the, the results. Uh, so that's the thing. When we start doing this kind of thing in Porto Alegre, uh, the idea was to use, like, uh, people that are interested in non Markovian light. And uh, also, I mean, to, to see some properties of uh, non-Markovian light. And then we, we start to think that uh, this kind of, to have a um, non-linear medium would be really important to have rogue waves or extreme events. But then uh, we could see something that's surprising. And I'll just show you in a minute the experiment. But the idea here is the following. Um, first, I have to be careful. The, ter uh, the term super extreme waves has been introduced with a precise meaning related to high order solitons. Uh, I will show, uh, here I, I will use it in the sense of very large deviation from normal distributions, in the simplest case of a linear one dimension light refraction. Uh, the point is that it seems that we don't really need anything that's a nonlinear medium or granularity to have to get super uh, waves or super extreme events with light. So by studying phases spatial memory dependence on diffract light waves, we generate super extreme waves in the linear region. Um, 
that's the thing. So um, you have just a single slit, and then you can generate a plane wave, and then with some with a mask we can, for example, could be like a 1D diffraction grating, and, and then uh, you have uh, n pixels of length a. In at each pixel, you can imprint a phase. Imprint a phase. Uh, it all depends on how you really choose these phases. So here you have uh, um, this is okay. It's all in far field, so light goes from after going through this single slit goes to a uh, observation plane, and then if here, uh, for example, the electric field can be could be simply written as a sink. Bet better here is just the position on the observation plane, depends on the angle compared to the central uh, slit. Um, and phi, phi j are the phases. It's important that here uh, phi, uh, the phases are 2 pi over L. L is an, an integer. And then we choose L equals 10. N is another integer, and then could be from 0 to 9 or 1 to 10. It doesn't matter. But you have 10 phases that you really uh, will uh, are you use in a convenient way, convenient way to really get something that we call non-Markovian light. So um, that's the thing. This is uh, the, the important thing, the important ingredient here is these phases have to be equally distributed along the unitary circle. Okay, we had some problems with the experiment, so they use this, but uh, I mean, it does not be, need to be with this profile, would be really equally distributed along the unit circle, but we test numerically and experimentally, I mean, uh, numerically, and then it's, it's, all, uh, it's analogous. So, um, and then, the, the point is how to really construct this sequence of phases. Uh, that's the, the thing. For example, I can show you, for example, you have M for me is a parameter, is memory, and N is the number of, um, I mean, the, the lines that will be illuminated, and um, the phases are chosen this way. You have L distinct phase, keep, for example, in this case, for example, you have 10 numbers, and then it is this what I call M equals 4, for example. I keep it fixed, and I can permutate this previous six phase, and just now this permutation goes here. Then I keep it again like four, the last four numbers, and then I permutate the previous six numbers, and then uh, this sequence, we, uh, we are filling up the sequence from left to right. So m equals 2, for example, is just that you, uh, I, can, I can show you m equals 2. Uh, oh, sorry. No, not m equals 2, but uh, for example, here is um, one special, I mean, not special, but like m equals 5. You have 10 numbers, you have 5 numbers here, keep 5, permutate 10, they are here. Keep five, permutate the previous five, they are put here. Keep this five, permutate this five, and they are put here. So that's the way that you can really uh, build up this sequence. This sequence. Okay, it seems that uh, non-Markovian, uh, it's not so easy to, to get non-Markovian light. So this is, uh, I, I don't remember exactly, but I, I know that there are two mechanisms in time, not really easy to reproduce, but then because of this idea, we could get uh, published a PRL in 2015, and here just uh, we were dealing with pseudo, a kind of pseudo light, uh, 2D, is a 2D um, arrangement of phases, but uh, uh, I'll make it simpler here because this is quite complicated. You can really uh, you can re it's re really easy to do this in a one-dimensional case, but in 2D, 
it depends on how many phase do you have. You really cannot have the cannot really fulfill the conditions that, for example, uh, in this case, depends on the memory. You, two fibers are never close to each other, for example. If uh, the phase are not correlated, then you see that, for example, we have four four. It doesn't matter. The, the next number that depends on the previous one. But uh, when you have this correlated phase, the next number, the distance between two, one here, for example, depends on the size of the memory. That's the idea. Uh, so uh, that's the, I give you some, just shortly, the, the, the experimental details is a blue laser and then uh, that uh, it's a blue laser. Uh, um, okay, this is the wavelength. Uh, okay, it goes to a, um, a beam span so that we could really guarantee that we have a plane wave. Uh, the result wa wave front illuminates an active area of um, what we call a spatial light modulator. This is what I mean. We really can generate the sequence of phases in a computer and then uh, imprint it is in, in this spatial light modulator that is just after the, the slit. And um, the diffract wave front then illuminates a cylindrical lens that, uh, I mean, in, in the end, uh, the intensity pattern is registered in a CCD camera and uh, image this is including the central maximum area registered for a thousand realizations up to the first diffraction order. Um, okay, this is the the experimental setup. This is this spatial light modulator, and uh, that's the thing. For example, um, because we are doing a sequence in one D sequence of phases, then the idea is we have uh, on the horizontal all these these phases, but uh, at the vertical the column the phases is repeated. So that, uh, for example, what you see here for M4, for example, is the average along this column at each point uh, along the X line. And then the point is, for example, now what you are expecting is that for the M depends on M, M is, remember, is the memory. Uh, you can see some extre extreme events, but uh, I mean, if the memory is really, I mean, close to uh, eight, nine, then the idea is that you see more extreme events, but M is close to one, for example, it goes more, more close to the uncorrelated phases, and then uh, and that would be like more Gaussian statistics. The main thing, uh, the other thing, this is real, uh, a real, I mean, uh, 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 experimental result. You see here, for example, the light is really highly concentrated along, uh, I mean, the plane of observation at some point. Uh, it's not, I mean, uh, it's not that, for example, if you choose memory, the size of, uh, I mean, the memory for all the sequences that are with uh, this, I mean, M equals four, we will have the same profile. Sometimes they show um, almost nothing light is equally distributed along the, the observation plane, but sometimes you can see really uh, some points where the light is really concentrated or just super extreme event. But uh, one thing that you can s clearly see that as the memory increases, the probability of uh, getting more extreme events gets higher. And especially for M equals five and M equals eight, for example. These are the experimental, uh, the results from the experiment. Uh, this is a PDF, um, the probability density function of um, against, I mean, in the, uh, here you have intensity uh, uh, normalized by mean intensity. Mean intensity here is you sum over all the points on the screen and as also on all, um, all the realizations, we, we did like a thousand realiz uh, realizations for each of the memory. And then it is in black here is the result for the no Markovian, uh, uh, Markovian light, I mean, no correlations in the phases. And then see that uh, you really get a um, 
long tail distribution for depends on m. You see here from m to from two to seven, the probability of having really uh, high events is is getting bigger. So, um, but uh, then it's very separate. Here you see m equals five and m equals eight. That is, uh, I mean, five should be less than six, and then, but uh, here you see the in intensity less about 50, and then uh, here about 150, for example. Um, this is all the results from the experiment. For example, for the Markovian phases or non-correlated phases, this is really well fit to the O'Reilly distribution, O'Reilly distribution, but uh, when M equals two, memory equals two, four, seven, it deviates quite a lot from the Rayleigh distribution. Then you see, for example, here you have events that are um, like 15, um, I mean the, in, uh, the intensity is, I mean, here is you have intensity minus mean intensity uh, normalized by the standard deviation. So it's 15 times the standard deviation. You can get data here like 18, times the standard deviation, 30 times the standard deviation, m equals 5, m equals 8 is 60, sometimes 80, 80 times the standard deviations. So far more uh, larger than the, the normal um, criteria for rogue waves or even for super extreme events. On the right, uh, here you have, uh, I'm showing you the intensity is the the, the bracket here is, means that intensity at each point of the screen that is uh, normalized with uh, the mean intensity. So here is uh, intense uh, for, we have like a thousand realizations, so it's average on over a thousand realizations, and here is the variance. That's for Markovian, the first thing that you observe for Markovian light, there is light at the center of the screen, but when M equals, when you have correlations in these phases, for example, it's easy to, in fact, it's easy to show that the center of the screen will be dark. Not complete dark, the dark depends on the size of memory, the, the memory length. For example, M equals two, there are light, but not like in the Markovian case, M equals four, less light, and M equals seven is getting really, really dark. In the periodic case, that could be like M equals nine, is completely dark, the, the center of the screen. So, um, and uh, all, all the thing here is that, in, in fact, the, the message is that if you have high, um, uh, I mean, is, uh, as it increases M, you have more probability of having really extreme events. In fact, here, super extreme events but there are two cases that's a bit different because uh, five should be in four and seven, for example, but uh, the probability of having super extreme events is even high for this case. Um, okay, that's really the results from the experiment. It's not, you not really can compare quickly, but uh, I, I promi promise you that uh, the, the, the results are very qualitative, very, very, very similar. Um, I mean, it, uh, the simulations really reproduce the results in a very qu good quality. Um, because, you know, if we generate this phase on a computer, this is the thing that is sent to that uh, uh, mask. So it really you can use the same phases and uh, the same number of uh, realizations. So um, what is behind it? Uh, the, the first thing is, for example, we, we calculate this correlation length. Here should be uh, integers because this is phi. Remember that phi is phases are 2 pi of, I mean, exponential of 2 pi of L times an integer. In fact, here should be the product of two integers. The way that you compute these correlations, it depends on where you have a block of L numbers and then how this is correlate with then another, the second block of L numbers, and so on. So if the two numbers are equal, this is one. If they are different, this is zero. And then this is shown here. For example, if you see for M equals one, two, three, four, 
it's really uh, you don't have uh, the length, the distance in the correlation in distance or no number of blocks of size L really goes to one over ten. We have ten numbers. It's easy to, to see why. But uh, for five and eight, the I mean, they don't have any decay of the correlation length, and they they are years eight will be half and for five will be point two. Then also you did this integrate correlations and then as a function of memory length, you see that uh, it's increased as we were expecting the memory length, we I mean the integrate correlation will increase with the memory length, but then you have here two points that I, I'm not really happy about this, but for example, uh, these are two exceptions that for some people confirm the rule, uh, but for me it's just that they are really exceptions. You, it's easy to see why five and eight are so special. Uh, I mean, because we have here the, for example, see, this is memory equals five. You have five numbers that you never mix up with these five numbers because L over L minus M, 10 over 10 minus the memory is commensurable, commensurable for L equals five, commensurable for L equals eight. This is the case of L uh, uh, memory eight. For example, you see zero, three, zero, three, three, zero, three, zero, along all the sequence, ev always at the same distance, but you have just a slight uh, perturbation, but uh, not so much as in the other case. So um, that's because then you can really get more, uh, I mean, the correlations is a long length correlation, and uh, the probability that you can get s super extreme events is higher. So um, what's the message? I mean, it would be much easier, I mean, much nicer to give this talk for um, people that work with the optics, especially experimentalists, because they don't like the word commensurable or incommensurable, but here I know that it's so obvious. So I mean, um, the point is, or the main message for us is that we don't need any nonlinear medium to have super extreme events. That's the thing. You know, uh, you just have like a, okay, but then you see how you produce these phases. There's something in the phase, but once you have this initial condition and you just propagate it in a clean medium, you will have this, I mean, uh, you can also see uh, super extreme events. That's, that's the message. I mean, this is really important uh, for the people that work with optics, because if you see all the experiments, they are really, really complicated. You have complications about the initial conditions and also about the propagation because they require always a nonlinear medium. So that, that was the idea of this, this work. And um, as a final considerations, uh, the novelty for us was like for, uh, the memory effects of spatial distributed random phases can increase the probability of constructive constructive interference of random linear waves. Uh, the spatial phase structure is disordered, but even so can exhibit long range correlations leading to extreme events. Remember, this is, seems obvious, but it's not the case that every time you have for every re realization that M equals five, for example, you see a uh, sup uh, super extreme events. They are really occasional. Okay, uh, you, you have a number of sequence, w I mean, the probability that you really get this super extreme event is still very, very low. Although you have this long range correlation. Uh, super extreme optical waves in a linear diffraction that, uh, I, I mean, is up to date super extreme events have been observed in both hydrodynamical and optical systems only when strong nonlinearities are present. Here we have reported the observation of, uh, of super extreme optical waves in a linear and one-dimensional light diffraction experiment. 
And linear versus nonlinear mechanisms is just that here you are on the side of linear mechanisms. So you don't need, we don't need uh, nonlinear diffraction. This is linear diffraction. And uh, thank you for your attention. It's uh, good to hear this message.